to what is the primary key constraint now? Why we need a primary key? So far we have learned all these constraints. Uh, what all constraints we have learned? We have learned uh, the unique constraint, check constraint, not null and default. I have applied all these constraints on this table. Let's assume that. So name is having not null constraint and this phone number column is having a unique key constraint. Marks is having the check and the default constraint. So we have applied all the constraints. But then still there are certain issues here. You can see we have two students with the same name, Sam, and they both have scored 34 marks and they don't have a phone number. But these two students are two different uh, students and uh, maybe uh, the way we have created this table, we had only these attributes and there was nothing much to differentiate uh, students, right? So in this case, we are going to have duplicate uh, entries kind of a stuff, but they are actually not duplicate. They are unique records. So we need to identify these uh, students uh, in a way that it is unique. So we have to go in for an unique ID for every student. When I say unique ID, your registration number is an unique ID, right? So it is mandatory. If you are a student in our university management system, it is mandatory for you to have a registration number. So registration number is not going to be null, whereas it's going to be unique to every student. So such kind of a key, you call that to be the primary key constraint. You call that to be a rule. When I define a column to have a primary key constraint, what it means, it is mandatory for that column to have a value. And then it's mandatory for that value to be unique. So that kind of a constraint is called as a primary key constraint. Uh, let's uh, see the syntax for applying primary key constraints. So this is the definition. The constraint defines a column or combinations of column which uniquely identifies each row in a table. It's not only just one column. Sometimes combinations of columns can also be defined as the primary key. Um, we will see that in certain examples later on for uh, for now we'll just take the registration number example so this is the syntax you have to give the column name data type say if it is registration number where care 2 of 10 constraint is the keyword constraint name is uh, whatever constraint name table name underscore column name underscore uh, pk primary key and uh, primary space key so this is the actual constraint definition. So let's create a table and uh, make a primary key. Very important, you know, in database management systems, you have to see to that whenever you create a table, if it, that table is of a strong entity, like a student table or a faculty table or a course table, you have uh, to find some unique way of identifying that uh, record or object inside your table. So for that, you go and establish a primary key constraint. So let's uh, start off with this uh, constraint. Let me go to my SQL window. Now let us see the demo for primary key constraint. Um, if I have created any table, let me drop it first. Drop table student. So let's take this demo on primary keys. It's a create table student. We're going to have registration number to be of where cap two of 10. And then we'll say this to be primary key. Say if you don't want to give a constraint name, you can directly give primary space key. So that will also create a primary key, but the standard we have to follow is we should always give constraint names. Constraint, constraint name here is um, table name underscore column name underscore primary key. So here we can do. And uh, next we have to give the constraint primary space key that's it define this and uh, we can go with other things like uh, name marker to 10 and for it will also have another column marks so our table is created say once when you create something to be a primary key it will be unique and not null combination of both you can also see that when i describe student it automatically says that it's a not null column. So you cannot insert a null value in the primary key column. And you should, you cannot have a duplicate value in the primary key column. So the value cannot be missing and the value cannot be null. So let's insert some values here. Insert into uh, student values. 
the registration number one two three name i give my name satish and uh, marks uh, some 34 something like this again if i try to insert the same registration number for any other uh, student with a different mark but the registration number alone is the same you'll get unique and strength violated that is you are trying to insert a duplicate value in the primary key column if i Try skipping this value. If I want to insert null there, they insert into student. I just want to insert a name and marks. I'm just trying to avoid this primary key column. Then what will happen? So now if I perform this again, you see cannot insert null into because that's a primary key. So this is uh, uh, how you create primary key while you're creating the table. And suppose I want to drop this uh, key. What I have to do? Alter table student drop constraint. What is the constraint name? Student underscore column name is registration number. What is the column name? Registration number underscore primary key. So I have dropped this constraint. Now if I take a look at the student table, that not null has gone. And in this case, say I want to again establish the constraint. Now, if I want to establish this constraint, what will I do? I have to go with alter table commands on an already existing table. So alter table student add constraint. Constraint uh, name, yeah, it's a table name, underscore column name, underscore primary key, that is uh, one standard. And we say primary space key. Now we have to give on which column we are going to establish the primary key constraint. It is the rich number column. And now the table is altered. If you just take a look at this, we have established the primary key constraint using the alter table command. See, we can also uh, define the primary key as a table level constraint too. How to do that? Let me try this create table student one. Did I drop this table? Let me clear screen. Let's try. Uh, having this primary key as a table level constraint. So let's uh, drop table student one just to be safe. Uh, uh, yeah. Table student one. Then we'll have a rich number to be of type. Uh, care two of 10. And then we'll have some name to be of again where care two of 10. So we'll have this constraint defined at the table level for that you have to give constraint constraint name is uh, table name underscore column name underscore the constraint and then primary space key and then we have to give the column on which you're going to apply registration number so that's how you define this uh, primary key constraint at the table level so you should not have any confusion on how to create a primary key constraint and wherever that is required for you, you have to enforce a primary key column in your database or else you'll end up with issues which we discussed in the initial stages of the uh, initial presentation. We had a slide with some data, right? You will not be able to identify uniquely which record belongs to which uh, uh, entity. So now let's uh, we have understood primary key for a particular column. I told you two columns in combination can also be primary keys. There will be situations like that. Um, let's take a, a course registration column. Let's let's create a table like this. Say let's create table registration. So this uh, has got uh, two things. One is student ID, a student uh, registration number. And also, this will be student registration number. I'll give this as a varchar two of ten. And then the course registration number, course ID. This is varchar two of ten. Assume that uh, this table registration is used for managing which student registered for which course. Simple, right? Let's see whether the table is created. OK, so this table is used for managing which student registered for which course. Maybe I want to track. Uh, normally the question one student can register in how many courses in a semester? 
one student can register in uh, say five courses. It depends on the credits, right? So a student can register in many courses. So let's say uh, uh, a student with registration okay. number registers uh, in five courses. Let's uh, insert into registration values. Instead of uh, giving the registration number here for understanding purposes, I will consider the name to be the registration number. Say Satish is the student. And he is registered in uh, different courses. Say first he registers in DBMS, Database Management Systems. So this is one course he has registered. Likewise, this student can register in multiple courses. So you can also have operating systems, OS. He registers in operating systems. He also registers in, uh, say, networks. Sadish also registers in cyber security or Java, you can say. Next, he registers in cyber security. So, oh, oh God, that, that is because of the length exceeded. Let's say security course, something like this. Let's reduce it. Yeah. So now, when you take a look at the registration table, One student, Satish, has registered in many courses. This is the normal thing when you talk about registration. A student can register in multiple courses. The next question is, you take database management system. How many students it has? Is it having just one student? We have more students here, right? So a course can have many students. It's not that Satish only will take DBMS. So there will be other students also registering for DBMS. Say Ram registers for DBMS. So in that case, the student registration number will be RAM and you will be registering for DBMS. Likewise, RAM also registers for OS. Okay, it's like, okay, I'll read only two subjects to Sam. So he registers for OS. Likewise, there is another student, Sam. Sam will register for, uh, say, DBMS again. So these are the subjects taken by students. Uh, and again, uh, Sam will register for, uh, say, networks. Now, what we have understood here is one student registering for many courses, and one course is also having many students, like DBMS as Satish, Ram, and Sam. We'll take a look at the table here. Select staff from registration. So, Satish, what are the courses he has registered? These are the courses. Ram has registered two courses. Sam has registered two courses. Now, what is the primary key in this table? A primary key should be not null. Of course, two columns, we don't have any null values, let's say. But the next important condition is a primary key, sh key should be unique. So can I say a student registration number to be the primary key? Can I do that? I'll not be able to because we have duplicate values here. Likewise, can I say course ID to be the primary key? No, because again, we have DBMS repeating multiple times. We have OS repeating multiple times. We have networks repeating multiple times. So then what is the primary key here? So the primary key for this table can be defined as the combination of student with the course. Say Satish can take DBMS only once during this semester. So it's, you cannot have Satish DBMS again entering in the registration table for the semester, right? Likewise, Satish can take OS only once. You cannot have duplicate value. The combination will not repeat. Can Satish DBMS again uh, repeat in the registration? No. So we can make the combination of Satish plus DBMS. I mean the student registration number plus course ID to be the primary key. The combination will never repeat. Is RAM and DBMS repeating anywhere? RAM and OS repeating anywhere? No. But independently, this column will have duplicate values. This column will have duplicate values. The combination will not have any duplicate values. So what we can do is here, I'll tell you how to make the combination a primary key. Say alter table student, uh, is it student one? Oh, it's registration, I'm sorry. Alter table registration. Then we'll add constraint. Constraint and the constraint name here is, uh, it's a table name underscore I'll just give reg and uh, course some some combination I'll give here. 
red scores underscore primary key and then primary space key. Now, what are the two columns? One is the student. What is that column name? I have given. I have to see that. Rage number. Another column is name. Student rage number. Another column is course ID. Okay. So we have to mention these columns. That is student registration number. So this is one column. Comma course ID. These two columns together form the primary key. Yeah. So now. What is the primary key in this table? It's a combination of these two columns. And uh, if you try inserting something like this, insert into registration values. So again, if I try to insert Satish and uh, DPMS, the combination should throw me an issue. See, unique constraint violated because the combination will be an issue. If Satish registers for some other course, say, Python. This should not be an issue because it's not a combination. It's just uh, the combination is unique, whereas the independent uh, columns can have duplicate values. So did you all understand this uh, primary key concept uh, and uh, why we say multiple columns together become the primary key in a table and the various ways with which we can apply primary keys? Are you all able to follow this? Because uh, sometimes students get really confused with uh, why we go in for uh, multiple column combination to be primary keys in a table. We will end up with situations like that and we will be forced to enforce primary keys like this too. 